Hey guys, so today we're talking about how to build a vertical garden wall. I have a very simple way to do that. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any future videos. And of course, if you have any questions along the way, feel free to leave them in the comments. I'll make sure to answer them. So we're building out this structure with six by six cedars, but we're not gonna put our posts in the ground for longevity. We're using some Simpson Strong Ties to, for the post base. Now, if you have concrete, you can drill these in and attach to concrete. If you have soil, you're gonna wanna dig a footing, pour some concrete, and then add your Simpson Strong Tie or post base to the bottom there and that's going to help with the longevity of your structure. It's optional. You can put your post right in the ground especially if you're using pressure treated but that's what we like to do and what we would do for our clients typically. So after you get the brackets in you're going to build out the rest of your framing. We have our post. We're going to have a header board run across the top and that's mostly for aesthetics but it does actually help keep your post vertical and make the structure stronger in general. Then you're going to add runners and the runners are what your soil bags are going to attach to. So we're using felt bags that will fill with soil and so this structure needs to be fairly stable because soil plants and water can definitely add up and because our structure is fairly long we're going to add some supports in between now if you're only going to build a four foot wide structure you don't need that center support but once you get to five or six feet span you run the risk of having a little bit of sagging from the weight and so that's where you want to start adding in these vertical supports so more or less you'll have a grid like system and that should be structurally sound to hold all of your plants now the structure set you want to add your soil bags we use three separate five pocket bags so a total of 15 different planting pockets they have some individual ones they have shorter ones and longer ones depending on what you're looking for for the space that you're filling so for us we made sure that our runners going across the top were about every 18 inches from the top and that is where we are going to hang our bags so it's actually fairly easy there's grommets on these bags about every 22 inches and so you will line up screws with the grommets and you will hang the bags now, of course, you can build a similar structure or if you want the exact instructions, go ahead and check out the links below, but you can get as creative as you want. You can even make your own fabric bags as well. Now, the fun part for me is the plant selection and of course, the layout of the plants can very much affect the overall aesthetic of your wall. I recommend usually between three and 10 different plants and repeating them throughout the space and ha either having some sort of pattern that you repeat on the different lines or you create a wave of plants, maybe a grass green one going up the side there's so many things that you can do but before you get excited about picking all the plants that you want make sure that you pick plants that are good for the sun exposure that you have especially because we're in a vertical environment your plants are going to lose a lot more water because they're in a vertical face and there's air all around them wicking the water out if you are north facing, you're gonna want more plants that can handle non-direct sun or bright light. If you're south facing, you're getting hot direct sun. Sun exposure or shade exposure are important to consider when selecting your plants, but also the aesthetics is something that you can have so many different ways about it. If you wanna go modern and simple, you might choose one to three plants. It could just be one simple carex that's planted in every single row and you have this beautiful draping of green that would be a beautiful screen or breaking up a fence. I would say the three to 10 plant range where you just have repetition will give you a very nice and robust planting wall. You'll also see what plants do better in the vertical system. Some of them may do extremely well, some of them not as well. So having a variety of plants is sometimes good for that. And then of course, you could do the botanical way where you love every plant and you want to put everything in there and that's fine too probably great for a cottage garden but for the majority of us it might be a little too chaotic and look a little too messy <laughs> what i suggest is laying out your plants in the pockets before you plant any of them you can fit about three one gallons in each of these pockets i wouldn't plant a lot more than that you could you'll just have more editing later because the plants do grow and you want to give them soil space to fill out and be robust so after you get your layout you want to fill the pockets with soil so you'll take your bagged garden soil and you'll fill in the voids between your one gallons or if you had six inch whatever size plants you used fill in the voids so it's about maybe an inch or so below the top the soil is going to settle a little bit as you go so don't be too worried to put too much soil in but you don't want to cover the neck of the plant the plants like to keep the same soil level so wherever that soil level is out of the container make the dirt match that and now that you have your soil in you're planting the plants, which is basically the set before, but you wanna make sure that you check for any 
air pockets or any voids in any areas and make any adjustments that you want and make sure that they're fit nice and snug. And of course you wanna wet down your wall, which will help settle the soil a little bit as well as give your plants their first drink, which they will very much appreciate. Now on to the last step, which is optional, but recommended, which is irrigation. I recommend using a string drip irrigation system. They come with inline drips, which can be every six inches, nine inches, or 12 inches. I recommend that every nine inches. And this basically means you'll have like a spaghetti tube that has little holes in it, and you run it along the top of the pocket. That will go ahead and drip down on each layer. And so the bottom layer might get a little more saturated than the top layer because it kind of gets the accumulation of all the rest of the pockets off the bottom pocket because these are felt bags you will get some dripping into the landscape now if you had an area where you cannot have any dripping then you can actually get these bags lined in plastic but it's best for the plants for that water to be able to move fully out of the bags it just creates a better environment for them I highly suggest adding the irrigation, especially like we mentioned, any vertical settings tend to dry out a little bit faster than in-ground applications. And especially if you wanna go on vacation and not worry about your plants, you'll be very happy that you have a drip irrigation system. You can set up a battery operated timer off your hose bib if you want. They have these really, there's a variety of ones that you can use, or you can tie this into your overall landscape system and put it on its own valve or at least its own uh, timing setting because it's going to be a little bit different than the rest of your garden for sure. In regards to maintaining these walls, these are not a no maintenance kind of thing. They look so beautiful when you put them in and when they grow in in the next few months, they look amazing. If you opt to use a lot of succulents, you might have some of the succulents throwing flowers pretty far or growing their stems far. Things might get a little leggy. So those are things you wanna check in on every few months just for the most aesthetically pleasing wall. You can snip the succulents back, stick them in the soil, or if there are other plants, you'll see some plants do really well that you might be like, hey, you know, I'm gonna put a few more of those and switch these ones out. So for a vertical wall to look its best, just assume you're gonna be doing a little bit of plant replacement or adjusting every three to four months or so. And if you live in an area that it freezes, you might just be uh, you know, waiting for that growth to come back in the spring anyways. <laughs> so hopefully this is helpful for you. Again, it's one of the most easy ways to put together a vertical garden, whether you're trying to screen at your neighbor or just break up a long fence or just beautify a simple or narrow space. I think it's a great solution. If you want the full instruction, go ahead and check out the link below and make sure you subscribe and ask me any questions that you might have in the comments below. I'll make sure to get back to you. Thank you guys.